just a exactly. Website. That's that's where they make money. They're saying if you want to use your own domain, you pay us. I think it's ten ten uh, U.S. dollars a month a uh, year. Sorry, ten U.S. dollars a month a year. It's here, memorable address, and compatible with new online services. You can have your own domain, and it's pointing to some service. Tomorrow you decide to move to another service, you keep your domain, and people will find something else somewhere else. Um, there are lots of those, and every day there is a new one, and sometimes they're good, sometimes they're not good. Go with something that's good. Google has Blogger, uh, WordPress is WordPress, uh, Tumblr is very simple and very easy to start. Everything's possible. Um, look for whatever you like. Um, it's, it's two seconds to make an account. Find something that is easy for whoever is going to be in charge of, of managing it and start it. But don't, don't get into the hassle of becoming too technical because next time you have to do something technical, it's going to be like taking over the time that you should be doing something good with. Um, the good point about uh, hosted websites, uh, hosted services, is also that they act as a community. For example, you are on WordPress.com or Tumblr or something. Um, if, you, if you make uh, a post on something, people who are on that uh, platform will find it through that platform. So it becomes a hub of all the websites that they host. Um, if tomorrow you decide to go with your own website, with your own script on your own server, people can only find you through search engine, for example. So, again, it's a question of choice. It depends how much resources you have to allocate for that. More control, more hassle. And that's it. Um, I'm putting that presentation online um, if you want to get the address. and. Um, Pretty much everything I'm talking about has links. So um, I put the links on that presentation. They're here. So the last slide is all links, and they're all going to be clickable. And um, feel free to contact me um, by email, uh, and if not, on zlog.net um, without the Geneva Summit. And um, yes, please. And by the way, um, that presentation uh, on that thing is actually a Google thing, so yes, more Google. Yes, please. Yeah, I just wanted to make three other points that I think add to your presentation. The first is the importance of time limits. You are very good about the importance of limitations about how much you send out. If you're doing a, a YouTube video, for example, two minutes is the max. I know you are tempted to put on 15 minutes with all the important points that really appeal to you, but nobody watches done tests of this. So just be aware of that when you're putting together your sites or you're uploading to YouTube. Um, just so you know, there's 20 hours of video uploaded to YouTube every minute. So you're in something of a competition against other people. The second thing I would say is that anything you do should be adaptable for mobile, particularly in the developing world. 400 million phones in China, 600 million two years from now. Uh, most people are going to access the internet via mobile device rather than through a laptop or a netbook. Is it going to be too expensive for them? Is it going to be too expensive for them? Well, some have bypassed landlines, some it's too expensive for, some the machines are just easier to use. But Trust me when I say that anything you do should be adaptable to mobile, especially in the field of human rights. Because you're going to want to appeal to people throughout the world, not just in developed societies. Um, the third thing I would say is you should look at mapping and the use of mapping tools as a way to show people uh, about certain issues or certain places.
representation of a conflict that is much more appealing to people than a simple uh, set of numbers or text. <coughs> so I really do recommend that you look at how different people are using mapping techniques. And it doesn't take a lot of expertise. I don't have it, but I've been told it doesn't take a lot of expertise to add a map layer to Google and to other mapping services. Well, really thank you to Google for the announcing I had in the dark demonstration on the 11th of February. So, so the shadow and your buses, you, 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 you Google map showed kilometers and kilometers of buses that brought people into demonstrating for in, in, in the defending Amadilla with all phones. Thank you, Google. Precisely to uh, separate the content from the container. Your website is the container. Uh, your website could be also Twitter. Twitter has RSS indication. Facebook, your your vault has RSS indication. The whole idea by using RSS is that tomorrow someone can reuse it for something else. For example, someone who is using it uh, on their phone. If it if it's not on their phone, it might be I don't know. Uh, Recently, there, there was a, a new iPhone application which actually has uh, automatic uh, voice reading of any text. You put your RSS feed on one side and it reads it to you um, like, like a, an audio book. Um, you can only do that if you separate the container from the content, if the text is only the text. So that's where it becomes very important that you're using tools that allow you to have RSS and to make sure that your website are not completely static with the, con the container and the content uh, blended together because then people can't extract the, the content. Yes? And I just wanted to offer another option to people because there's a lot of different people in different ages and maybe I want to just tell you about something. Maybe not all of you know the concept. Uh, I currently live in Vienna and I started to be involved with the, this young organization and they formed something that, that the name of it is Hub, or Hub Vienna. You can find it in the, most of the big cities, in central cities in Europe. There's one in Milan, there's one in, as, as well in South America, in Sao Paulo. And the, it's, it's actually just, it's a space, it's a big space, but the concept is it, to bring young individual or young idealist people uh, that they're all uh, busy or concerned about uh, social responsibility or what we call a social entrepreneur. And um, so if you are looking for young people to support your cause, because I think it's very important, it's another, the way I see it, it's taking the network or taking the internet and making it, making it to very practical. And it's like a living internet in a way. And you can find they have a lot of events and a lot of young people that you can communicate with and can support your cause. Um, they have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, meetings of sharing uh, of ideas, for example, and just a lot of networking, and yeah, so just if you're looking for something, uh, it's not in every city in, via, in uh, Europe, but in the, in the main ones, uh, you can find it, it's hub, and I think it can be very useful for any NGO. How do you get into it? How do you get into it? How, what is the, what is the uh, it's, it's an open URL? URL. What, what? Uh, just do uh, Google hub. And I don't know where you place right now. Hub I mean, Geneva, I said Hub Geneva. And you can check if there's Hub in Geneva. I'm not sure about it. And if you do Hub Vienna, then you get to the Hub in Vienna. And it's very easy. I mean, Is there a Hub London? Um, I'm pretty sure okay. there is. But you need to check it. Because I'm English or French. I so yeah, so I think it will be very, I know that you're trying to push your cause and you can find people that will not only listen to you, but will actually do actions. It's you know young individuals that really want to do something in the matters of social responsibility. And so I just, you know, if you're interested, just check it. I think it's very, it's new and it's very useful. <laughs>